This is the heart of our dojo. This is where we keep the picture of the founder of Aikido, the late grandmaster Morihei Ueshiba. And also we have his Oihai or memorial tablet. And before practice, after practice, when we enter this dojo, when we leave this dojo, we always pay our respect to the founder. And in your training in Aikido, I hope that when you train, you will always keep the founder's image, founder's ideas, the founder's teachings in your heart. This is part of the spiritual training of Aikido, to understand his message that uh, we should not fight, but somehow reach harmonious relationship with our fellow human beings. Next, katate tori ryote mochi. Now two hands grabbing one hand. Okay, two hands grabbing one hand. Now his power is twice as much as mine. So uh, if we're not careful, this is very, very difficult to, to develop the technique. But this is one of the essential training uh, methods in Aikido against ryote tori important is to be able to move your hand freely. If he's holding well, just struggling like this, cannot move it. Very difficult. Okay? Use your energy, use your whole body. Legs, hip, elbow, shoulder, keep it down. It's not pushing down this way. It's not trying to pull. Hold well, hold well please. Not pulling. And not pushing down. Not trying to twist up. Okay. Just I use my arm power, I'm going to have a tough time. Hold strongly, tough time. Right. Okay. Use your whole body. Okay. Use your whole body. Okay. In this case, if my energy comes through my thumb, my power, power comes through my thumb, lifting up like this. It's very difficult. Comes through the hand blade the small finger. This way. This way. Not up. Not up way. Not up way. Small finger. Turn. Whole body. Step. Slide in. Turn. Or step. Turn. Step. Next, Teng Kong, slide, turn, bring up, and cut down. Don't try to lift up. If you try to turn without moving into your opponent's side, you're going to have lots of problems. It's very tough. Move in. Same side as your opponent. Cut down. Don't try to throw this. Very difficult to pull him. Side in. Turn. Then develop the timing more. Next, moving behind. Turn. Then back foot comes back. And catch ikkyo. And continue ikkyo, nikkyo, sankyo, yonkyo. First hold, second, third, fourth hold. Important thing, don't collapse. As I move in, we have a tendency to collapse our hand. Then we get stuck. At the same time, as we mentioned before in the other techniques, too stiff, trying to use too much power, you jam yourself. He's holding strongly. I can move in now. I got stuck. Relax your shoulder. Relax your arm. Concentrate on strong outpouring of energy through your small finger. Then side in with your hip. Then back foot back. Catch. And moving in ikkyo. 
When I say back foot back, this is a very important point, I feel. We slide in here, this back foot should step back. But uh, in many cases, people move the inside foot, inside foot, like this. If I move the inside foot, now he's facing me again. Now he's coming on top of me. This is what I don't want. I'm moving to move out of the line of fire. I'm moving to move out of the range of his attack. So I don't want to pull him on top of me. So what happens is when you use the inside foot in this technique, what happens is the effect is he comes on top of you again. Turn, inside foot, pulling him on top of me. Very dangerous. Turn, not inside foot, but back foot, back foot. Now he has to go around me, catch. I think this is a very important point. Turn, and catch. Then again, we can develop this to other techniques. Here, turn. Turn. Now, towards him. Catch bottom hand. Top hand catches top hand. Bottom hand catches bottom hand. Bring the top hand down. Bring bottom hand up. We call it jujinage or cross throw. Step in. Throw. Again. Turn. Come towards him. Bring down, up. I hum me stance. Crossing. Same as this technique. Except now with the feet crossed, this feet on the opposite side, I can move in this way. Okay? Opposite side, I can move in. Why? Moving into his kick moving into his kick, okay? That's why, move this side. This time, feet's opposite, okay? Now I can move in this way, understand? If I move in this way, now he's gonna kick me. Again, okay, Go back here. This foot forward, move into lead foot side. I move into his lead foot side. Then later, develop this technique. Okay, Ryote Mochi. Tenkang. Step back. Strike. Break his balance by dropping hip low. This hand. Round. Kyo. Okay. Again. Moving in deep. Like we mentioned before, don't step inside foot back. Okay, from here, back foot back. Coming down. Strike his face. Get his hand. Up. Thank you. 
And from here, we can go into second, third, fourth hold. Ting Kong. Down. Catch. Kotegaishi, wrist turn is also possible. Down, slow. Okay, again. Turn, catch you low. Then bend. This time going over. Back, go over. Inside. Same position. Go down. Catch. Coming over. Either way is possible. Many ways to, many, many techniques we have change your feet. Many, many techniques we have in Ryote Mochi. Okay. We don't have time to do all of them, but uh, let's discuss some of the problems that we have in training. Okay. See, we're practicing, we don't know what we're doing, we're both beginners, he holds lightly, then we can develop the movement. But as we begin to understand the technique, he should grab stronger, stronger. Don't give me chance. Don't give me a chance to do anything I want. Now I have to develop the proper technique in order to move him. I have to develop the proper technique in order to make my technique work, break his balance, break his power, throw him, or control him. Okay? Sometimes he's holding very tight, so I can't push down. Very hard. Okay? Use hip. Side, use hip. Sometimes it's difficult to come forward. It's holding well. Time to get come forward. It's time to go side. He puts his two hands together like this. Make a fist. Make strong. It's hard to go this way. Like this. Okay? He's holding my hand. Hard to go this way. Hard to go this way, just like this. Hard to push like this, but very easy to go like this. Make strong. Very easy to go sideways. Okay. Here, very hard to go this way. So go side. Turn. Step. I can go this way. Go side. It's too hard. Too hard. I'm stuck. I'm not good enough to move this way. Side. Go through. Side. Throw. Sometimes he's holding, pushing back towards me like this. So if I try to move in, I get stuck. I'm here, but as soon as I move, he tries to jam my shoulder. If I move to the side, he tries to jam me. Now it's very difficult. No matter how I move, he's jamming my technique. As soon as I try to come in, I get stuck. Okay? He's holding tight, holding this way. If he's trying to jam it, I can't move, I can't go forward, then leave it alone. Keep the soul your so, uh, shoulder very stable. Don't, don't throw your balance off. He's coming here. Turn. Back. Around. Down. If I move in, I'm getting stuck. I don't want to get stuck. Just turn. Down. Break his balance. Up. Down. Sometimes he's holding my hand up to keep me from going down. This is a problem too. 
okay? He knows I'm going to try to bring my hand down. He knows I'm trying to bring my elbow down. So he keeps my hand up like this. So now big prop. Okay, hold strong. Can go. This time bend. Okay. This time bend. Use if he's too strong with your elbow, coordinate with your hip. And rolling up can go down, difficult, drop. So. If I try to force it down again, hold strongly, if I try to force it, I'm going to get stuck. If I try to force it, I'm going to get stuck. Just drop here. And throw. Yes, that's right. Now I'm stuck. Drop down. Sometimes you can move in, go back. Sometimes you cannot move in, just go back, turn, throw. Here's one opportunity where we can see the power that we use in Aikido. He's grabbing. If I try to pull him back, very difficult. He's using two hands against my one hand. Resist strongly. That's right. Now it's difficult. Okay. So if I pull with my hand, I'm going to have lots of problems. Instead, pull from your center. Watch. This is hard. Instead of stretch. Okay. This way is hard. Trying to make him come forward, this is very difficult. Using hand. Relax his hand. Stretch. Use the hip. Move from your hip. Don't move from your hand. You're only using this much of your body. No way. Use your whole body. There you can even develop a throw. Don't struggle. Don't struggle. Move. As we're trying to move back behind him, sometimes we have a problem too. He won't let us turn. I'm sliding in. Get stuck. It's holding well. Very difficult to move in. If I come back here and try to pull him forward, he won't go. Very hard. Okay. Now you have to blend with his power. If I pull this way, he won't go. I get stuck. Very hard. Blend with his power. Here. Very easy to move. Okay. It's coming here. Pull. Very difficult. Touch. My hand touch. Now this becomes one, one here. This way, I'm just pulling against the power of this hand. Touch, this becomes one. That's very easy to turn. Okay. Sometimes he's pulling down. Now I'm going to lose my posture. Here, pulls down. No, it's very hard. When you feel that he's going to pull down, the important thing is not to lose your posture, not to lose your balance. As he pulls down, forward, pull. What's happening is he's pulling on my leg now. Okay, again. If I'm here and he pulls down suddenly, I'm going to be thrown off balance. He moves here, down. Okay. Now he's pulling my leg. That's why I don't receive his power. Then, down here, up, throw. He's pulling, this oh, off balance. He's pulling, side. Then step, break his posture. Up, throw. Another way to stop his power is to stop him from pulling, is to block his energy. 
See how my hand is? He pulls down. Just a minute. He pulls down. Gets stuck. This time, I use my thumb to stop his smaller finger here. If you film this way, my hand is relaxed and he pulls down. Very easy to go forward. Of course, I can bring my foot forward, but sometimes it's not possible to do this. Okay? If I bring my foot forward, he may try to pull, out, pull me out again and throw me off balance. As soon as he starts pulling down, watch my thumb. Use this power, stop his small finger. Stop his energy here. So pull down. This is normal. I jam with a thumb. Pull. Stay like this. Okay. Like this. Okay. Normal way. Come here. Very easy to jerk my hand down, throw me off balance, like this. But if I stop his power here, then nothing. Just like in one hand, this way, two hands grabbing. If he's pulling me, it's easy to go forward this way. Pull. Go forward. Pull. I can pull him though. Grabs two hands, pull. That's it, it's going forward. You have to pull strongly, pull strongly. Yes, that's, that's right, that's right, very good. One more time. Yes, that's right. Don't break me, please. Pull again. Other side, pull. Yes, that's right, okay. Hi. Of course, when he's pulling me, I can lean back like this, but actually if he pulls hard, it's just going to bring me forward. What I'm doing is, when he pulls me, if he pulls my hand, I'm going forward this way. What I do is I use my thumb again, stop his power at his pulse. Just make contact here, okay? If my hand is open, natural position, if he's pulling, I receive all the power in my body. But if I stop this power here with my thumb, watch. Like this. If he's grabbing with two hands, hold with two hands. Now you can't see what I'm doing. So in one case he can pull going off. But very, very subtly I stop this power. Like this. Coming here. My hand is this way and he pulls. It's going forward. Now I stop his power at his pulse. My thumb. That's why it's possible to do this kind of technique. grabs me and pulls me, I'm in big trouble. Okay. So these are some ways in Aikido where through our training, through our study, we study the ways that the power moves, how the power moves, how we utilize the technique, how we, how we utilize this power throughout the technique and uh, study becomes endless. It's a lifetime study. Many, many fine points to these techniques. So we can say just scratching the surface, you need to understand the basics and then go into the technique more deeply. The very ideal situation is to find a good teacher, find a good competent teacher. Okay? So please remember, Ryote Mochi, 
very difficult technique. You use this opportunity to study power. It's grabbing, it's not easy to move. Use the opportunity to study his power and find out how to move. And guide his power. Guide him, blend with his power. Then you can enjoy Aikido very easily. <laughs> okay, very good. Now going into next section, two hand grab. Okay. Now we've been doing one hand grab this way. Okay, doing many techniques, then cross hand grab, this way, many techniques. Now two hand grab, okay. In uh, this two hand grab, in Japanese we call ryote tori, two hand grab, many ways to move, many, many techniques. We'll just cover some of the basic techniques in this section today, in this lesson today, okay. Okay, going back to our basic movement, cut down, taking ikkyo. Okay, one hand, we punch, cut down this way. He's grabbing two hands, almost same thing, cut straight down, moving in. Okay, cut straight down, and moving in. Okay. From this kind of technique, of course, go nikkyo. From this kind of technique, of course, sankyo. Okay. This technique, of course, in tenkang, yongkyo. Many ways to do. In the same respect, when he's grabbing cross hand, stepping back this way, coming forward. Okay. So then coming forward, this time moving back using two hands. Stepping back, catch and turn. Stepping back and turn using this motion, this motion and with the hip, turn, turn. Stepping back, turn. Shonage. Stepping back, turn. Shonage. The problems I encounter quite frequently in teaching this technique, sometimes as we grab, we pull in this. We collapse our hands. Then, very hard. Sometimes too much strength, too stiff. Okay, two step. Then when you try to move, you have no space to go anywhere. Okay? So in this kind of technique, especially in Ryote Tori, where you have to concentrate on both hands, okay, it's important to keep your arms naturally extended, not pulling in, not too weak, not too strong. Too strong, too stiff, you jam him, then you're going to have a hard time. As I move, I pull in too much, everything collapsing against me, now I'm going to have a hard time. He becomes too strong. Keep this natural circular motion. Turn. That's why I step back. Make little space. Turn. In an older style, in older style, we used to catch his wrist, bend forward. Lock. Then honai. This is a little bit dangerous, a little bit painful, but good way to develop flexibility and strength in your wrist. This is a good way to understand how the technique progressed, how the technique has developed, how the technique has been refined. So, 
Now we concentrate more than inflicting pain, we concentrate on leading, breaking its balance. But once in a while, we need it. Okay, let go. Catch here. Lock. Okay. See, one hand, catch. Lock. Holding two hands, catch. Lock. Next, just grabbing, apply tenkang movement, apply the turning movement. Going faster pace. Okay, in this technique, don't let your arms collapse as you turn. Keep them in a natural position. As you turn, they collapse, you get stuck. Okay? If you're too stiff again, you have no room to move. You block yourself. Natural extension. Natural position. Then, just turn your body. And, side forward. Then, don't collapse. Then, don't be too stiff. Okay? Natural extension. Natural extension. Okay. Change feet. Next movement we call Tenshinage. This is a very interesting technique. In English we translate as heaven and earth throw. So oh, beautiful name, in my opinion. One hand's going towards heaven. One hand's going towards earth. The heaven, this is earth. So I, I particularly like this technique. Again, earth hand, lower hand goes low as you make irimi movement. Heaven hand comes high. Again, circular motion. Don't try to lift up, okay? It's not coming forward. It's not collapsing my hand. It's not trying to twist, but not guide circular motion. This hand comes low. This hand guides. Change. This hand comes low. This hand guides up. Inside. I, what I see often in practice is that when we move, we're so anxious to throw the opponent, we never get out of his line. So we come forward this way. Okay? As you slide in behind your opponent, move to his side. Be completely out of the line of his fire. One reason why is that when he grabs, very possibility he can kick you. So at the moment he makes contact, it's very important to be at his side, here, okay? When he grabs, don't be in front. He's grabbing, don't be in front like this, okay? Grabbing, side, then throw. He's grabbing, side, then throw. So please be careful. The second common problem I see is that we don't move in deep enough in the first movement. He grabs, we move to side, but too shallow. I'm still in front of my opponent. I'm still vulnerable to his attack. I'm still vulnerable to his kick. Here. I'm too anxious to throw him. I'm concentrating too much on trying to manipulate his hand. My feet don't move anymore. This is a big problem. 
to grab. Feet is important. Deep. Then throw. Moving deep. Throw. Then, once we master this movement, in irimi movement, we can apply this to tenching, to the fading back movement. Looks like this. Back. Throw. Again, not pulling, not pushing. Again, guiding, leading, like a wave, like a wave. Watch your spacing. When he grabs, don't let him come on top of you like this. And then you try to pull back away from him. Watch the spacing of your opponent very carefully. Judge very carefully. And move so that you always have space to create the easy, open, free movement. If he comes on top of you like this, you're going to get stuck. Okay. Naturally, if you pull away too fast, he has no, no reason to come after you. Lead him. Okay, then next up. Lead up. This time draw his hand up. Okay. Down, up. This is inside circle. My hand is forming inside circle. His hand is forming outside circle. Okay, two hands up. Throw. Next time, just use the hip. Just turn your hip. At the backhand, you may have to do this in order to catch his wrist to send him forward. But uh, just use your hip, moving away from him, keeping the proper spacing, keeping the proper timing, so that he can't change his attack and he can't kick you. Now he's, he grabs. In this technique, requires lots of timing, especially when he's grabbing very strongly. Yes, that's right. More strong. Yes, that's right. If I'm too late, I got stuck. I'm going to get thrown over. Catch his timing. Throw. Uh, I hope you remember one hand grab, sliding in, up, turn, throw. This time, two hands. Change your feet. This hand doesn't do much, but you have to keep it extended. You can't let it collapse, you can't let it push your opponent. Sliding in, up, keep this hand extended. Don't let it collapse, don't let it dangle. Okay, keep tending, and throw. Slide. And next. These words means to practice serenity. I love these words. Nowadays, people worry too much about how much noise they can make in front of everyone. We should always take a moment to be quiet, especially before practice, to concentrate our spirit and to remember the founder of Aikido, Ueshiba O-sensei, and also Doshu, the current grandmaster of Aikido.
It's always important, I believe, to take a few moments to be quiet, concentrate your spirit, and focus your attention to your training. This is especially important at the beginning of practice, just before we pay our respects to the founder of Aikido. When you bow, don't make it just a simple gesture. Bow and feel in your heart respect to your teacher and respect to your classmates, respect to the founder and respect to Aikido. Somehow by sitting quietly together, we seem to be able to unify our spirit to create a harmonious and pleasant practice. In the normal class, never forget how we respect each other and how we try to encourage each other in our training. In Aikido training, it's very important to create a harmonious, energetic, yet pleasant atmosphere. Practice with the thought of helping your partner to develop his own Aikido. In Aikido, you only develop yourself as everyone else around you develops. Well, I have some people who come once a month. That's not enough. Um, in my school, I recommend minimum of two classes per week. I have some students who come every day. I have some students who come every day, morning, afternoon, and evening. So I think the more you put into it, the more you get out of it, of course. Uh, I recommend one, two, three hours of training, three classes a week at the very minimum. Um, the most important thing is to make your practice regular and consistent. So you if you're on a schedule of three nights a week, you can't take off one week and then practice Aikido six times the next week. As much as possible, you have to think of Aikido as part of your life. You have to incorporate Aikido into your own lifestyle. It's the same as brushing your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth uh, one day, you can't brush your teeth uh, twice as many times on the next day. It's necessary to brush your teeth every single day. It's necessary to change your clothes every single day. Aikido is the same way. It's part of your living. It's part of how you live. It's something that you have to do every day. It's not uh, collecting pennies in a bank. Now let's study uh, Koshinage technique. Koshinage means a hip throw. And uh, we see, when we think of hip throw, I think normally we think of judo or jujitsu. And uh, hip throw or Koshinage is uh, quite well practiced in Aikido. but. Uh, what I notice nowadays is that many people are afraid to take the ukemi, take the fall from koshinage. I think people uh, feel kind of afraid or feel a little bit anxious. And because the partner is afraid to take the role, it's very difficult to develop the koshinage in training. But uh, in practice, the ukemi for koshinage and the koshinage technique itself is very easy, very, very easy. In fact, uh, to, to negotiate the koshinage throw is maybe one of the most simplest falls in the Aikido practice. And when I'm talking about koshinage in this context, I'm talking about in the sense of training. So uh, let's uh, look at the koshinage technique. The simplest one is uh, Aihammi, okay, right on right, okay, left on left, okay, simplest one. Koshinage technique, up, so, up, up. Now taking it step by step. 
break his balance. Step in front, strike his face. Then stay, keep this position. My feet should be like a T. Generally, this angle is wrong. Sometimes too much this way, too much this way. Generally, what happens, people go this way. You're putting your back to your opponent. Now, this is going to be very difficult, impossible. From the standpoint of martial art, dangerous. Not only impossible, but dangerous. Your feet should be like a T. Break his balance, strike his face. That puts this hand out of commission. Then step T. This way, this way, make a T. Then drop your hip and come down so until you can see his face. When you do a koshinage, this is not good. Looking on the ground. Turn your body until you see his face. What that does is put your back against his chest. So I come down till I see his face. Once I see his face, then I bring my hand down, lift my hip. Okay. If I'm looking down, this is incorrect way, looking down, he just fall on top of me. Now I'm in big trouble. If I'm moving, angles wrong, facing away from him, not creating a T, this is big trouble. So a simple thing is to break his balance, strike him while you make a T, drop your hip until you see his face, then come down. So for many uh, beginning Aikidos, uh, there's kind of apprehension about taking the fall. But actually the fall is very easy. Come here, T. Now I'm just going to balance him on my back. See, he's resting on my lower back. I'm supporting his weight with my legs. So very comfortable, yeah, very comfortable. If I put him on my upper back, I can't support him with my legs and feet. It's going to be lots of trouble. <laughs> now I can't, now I can't pick him up. Okay? So I have to balance him above my legs on my lower hip. Here. Okay. Then, when uh, your partner feels comfortable with that, here, up, let him wrap his arm around your arm. And you're going to support him when he falls. And if he lands on his feet, it becomes the easiest uh, fall to take of all the ukemi. Here. Hold up. And practice this way until your partner gets confidence. Up. Grab. Here, up, here. This is a writing which was presented to me by the Most Reverend Bishop Kenko Yamashita. He is my Zen master. I was ordained as a Zen monk under him uh, about five or six years ago in 1988. And uh, 
This writing says, the white cloud comes and goes on its own. Kind of mysterious saying comes from the Zen teachings, so a little bit unscrutable. But I think what it means, I think what uh, my Zen master is trying to tell me through this writing is that uh, everything is on our own effort. And we are free to go in any direction. Aikido people choose the path of Aikido. But we only go on this path through our own efforts by ourselves. So I think with this in your mind, please train hard rely on your teacher, but know that your progress, your learning, your understanding of Aikido is through your own effort, through your own blood and sweat, through your own sacrifice, and through your own perseverance. Keep that spirit in your mind when you practice. <laughs>